Well, we're glad uh, you're with us today. And, you know, sometimes when I'm preaching, like the week before, and something will just hit me when I'm speaking, and then I'll be thinking about the next week and think, you know what, I need to develop that more for the, the next Sunday. So we're going to, we touched a little bit, We've, I've even brought messages on this before in a series, but I want us to look at today in um, Genesis chapter 39, we're going to look at understanding God's favor and what that means. And uh, we're going to look at two different stories. We're going to look at, we're going to touch on uh, just Joseph for a minute, and then we're going to touch on uh, Samson. And I don't want you to take for granted, many of you might even not know the whole story, so I'm going to try and bring that in today, and I uh, hope the Lord will, will speak to us. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today. Lord, what's ever been on our hearts as we've walked in here, let us to know that, that let us know that as we see you in your word, as we feel your presence, we always have hope, and we're your children, and you want to bestow favor in our life. And Lord, may we just, Lord, even in a greater way, understand it more, it's by your grace, we don't deserve anything, but we're your children, and you want to bless us. So Lord, Lord, help us just to understand today, again, whatever we've come in here with today, what's ever on our heart, to know that we see you, that we have hope, we have heaven. Father, we have hope even for today, how you'll bless us in many ways. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I was telling somebody uh, before the service, say, man, I, you know, I've had my foster son the last few weeks, and I... I, I hope I understand you what I'm going to say today. So I am just so out of it after the last three weeks of having a 10-year-old. But, um, you know, I was up studying late the other night. It was about 2 in the morning. I look over at Sean, and uh, he's on the iPad with a, a Kit Kat and a Canada Dry ginger ale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. Oh, boy. So, oh, well, it's summer. He's up here, whatever. So, anyways, um, yeah. So, it, it's unbelievable uh, what the Lord teaches you about different things and what he has taught me even, not only so much about uh, also my foster, about, about your kids. And, and if, you can, if you can look at, I want you to try and get you this picture, whether you have siblings or whether you ha have had children, to understand, I'm, I'm going to give an example of grace. Grace is, let's say you have two or three kids, uh, if you are parents. Grace is like, no matter what, you love them, you love them the same. And there's nothing that they can do not to be your children. It, it is, it is that, that overwhelming love that you have, they are a part of you. And as a believer, we are a part of God's family. The Bible says once we accept him, by grace we are saved unmerited favor, no one can take us from his hand. It's his grace that saved us. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't figure it out. It's that all we have to say, Jesus, I accept you as my savior because of his grace, we become children of God. And once we do that, we are his children forever. Favor then is something different. Even sometimes get it mixed up. You can say it maybe sometimes the same, but for the most part, they're different, but they go together. Because of that grace, that unmerited favor, then you have favor with God that is merited. Let me give you an example with your kids, because you'll relate with this. If you had siblings growing up, uh, brothers and sisters, whatever, you would always say, uh, Bobby's mom's favorite, you know, Susie's mom's favorite, right? Right? I, I, I know this happened just about in any family, okay? Now, here's the way I look at it. We had Alexis, and then we had Novella, and then we had Stefan. Now, Alexis and Stefan always said, oh, yeah, Dad, Novella's your favorite. Novella's your favorite. Okay, now, the only reason, I wouldn't say she was my favorite, but she had my favor because she was more obedient. That was the only reason. <laughs> That's it. Those two were just always going at it and fighting and going with each other. And Anyway, so if you can look at it in that way, here's what it is. When, when we have grace in God's sight, 
There's nothing that he just accepts us. It's through his son, Jesus Christ, we have his grace. We are forgiven because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, once we're his children, righteous living, which is a gift, which we'll close with in a minute today, that righteous living that you live by, God looks down upon you and he gives favor in your life because you choose to live his way. He wants to bless you. You might be going through something even very difficult right now. You might not understand it. But the way that you'll get through it is God's word through the power of the Holy Spirit, through prayer and other brothers and sisters in Christ. But when it gets right down to it, it's you and the Lord. And this is what happened with Joseph. We're going to look at Joseph in just a minute, but give you a background. He grew up in a family where his brothers were jealous of him. And if you can say his father, his favor, his favorite was Joseph. The brothers hated that, and to sum the story up, they went out to the fields one day, as they would always do, and to go over maybe sometimes for a night or two, and they created a scheme that they would take the coat of many colors that his father had given Joseph, and they put animal blood on it and said that he had been killed, and in the meantime, they sold him into slavery, hoping that they would never see him again, and he was sold to the slaves. The slave owners took him down to Egypt took him to Egypt, and all the while it said God's favor was with him. He ends up on the auction block completely naked, standing there in humility, doesn't know the language, away from all his family, and Potiphar sees something in him. He sees something that, the, that God, that he doesn't even realize, is showing him there's something in Joseph. He takes him to be a servant in his house. And before he knows it, everything that Joseph is doing is prospering. He recognizes that. And he even recognizes it to the place two things happen. He puts him in a head over everything. It prospers. And it says he has given him authority. Now, I want you to get this. You might be in a difficult situation right now at work or in situations with family. But as a believer, this is amazing. Even though you might have a boss even though you might be in a situation with family, you have authority because you are pleasing in the eyes of God. You, I realize, even talk to some of you in the business world, your bosses come to you for advice because they know that they can talk to you in, in private accounts because they see something in you. It is God's favor. That's what Potiphar saw in Joseph. Well, one thing happens to another. Joseph is over all of his household except Potiphar's wife. Potiphar was a strong warrior. He had many men underneath him. To make a long story short, Joseph was a, was a handsome young man, and Potiphar's wife wanted to go to bed with him. And she tried again and again and again. And he fled one day. She grabbed his coat, and she lied to Potiphar, her husband, and said, he tried to go to bed with me. Now, here's the key. Potiphar could have very easily just had him killed. Probably in any other situation would have, but he, I believe deep down he knew, he knew his wife was lying. So the only thing he had to do, choice was, he had to throw him into prison. Now, can you imagine you, all you're trying to do is doing the right thing in your situation right now today, and instead of it getting better, <laughs> it gets worse, and you can't understand it. You know, he gets thrown into prison and then it happens again. The guard over all the prisoners says, you know, I see something in him. And let's pick up the story. Genesis 39, verses 20 through 23. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into prison. That's Potiphar, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not even look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did the Lord 
made it to prosper. That's Joseph. Do you know how long that went on? It is said that it went on some 13 years. We, you know what? It's easy for us. We get the Bible. We know the end of the story. Well, yeah, doubts, but you know what? The time went on, and you know it was okay, and everything worked out good, and before you know it, he's second to land, and he's got everything he ever wanted in his life. But what about your story? When it's your story, it's much different. This went on for 13 years. Now, let's put a pause button on that, and let's look at Samson for a minute. Because if I were to tell you that, would you want to be Joseph, who everything he did, he prospered, and it just got worse? at least from his perspective, for some 13 years. But then there's Samson. The Bible tells us that Samson from his birth was a Nazarite. Most of the time, a Nazarite would call what you've probably heard this before, a Nazarite vow. A Nazarite means to be separated. And what what Samson was through his mother, an angel of the Lord came to her and said, you're going to have... A, a male child comes Samson and his strength will be great. And this is what I want you to do. And this is important. A Nazarite vow, there's three things. He never, will, will, he'll never drink of the vine or eat any grapes. He'll never touch a dead carcass. And he'll never have his hair cut. That's the vow. Now, some of the vow was given from birth till the, most of their life. But that vow was also given for someone who was going through something, maybe you or me at that time, could take that vow. Some were given at birth. His was given at birth. Now, here's what happens. Here's why a lot of people aren't here today. They've taken the Christianity for granted. And this is what Samson did. You know, the Bible tells us, what's the first thing he does when he gets older? He's messing around, playing around in a vineyard. He's in a vineyard. He's not supposed to be in a vineyard. You know, I heard that, that one out of eight, one out of eight adults, was in the news this week, one out of eight adults has a problem with alcohol in our society. One out of eight. But yet, what do they do? They still go to the bar all the time. You go to their home, and there's liquor in the home. One out of eight. What's he doing? He's somewhere he shouldn't be. What do we do as a Christian when we take the Lord for granted? We're, we go to places sometimes we shouldn't be. And this is what he does. He goes in the vineyard. Now, here's where he thinks it's okay. He's down there doing, taking the grapes, doing what he's doing, probably drinking some wine, whatever, and he's in there, and all of a sudden the lion comes upon him. Now, God's grace was with him in favor. And the Spirit of the Lord came on, on Samson, and he attacked the lion and ripped him apart. That would be a little confusing. But see, that's where God's grace comes in. God, God's grace comes in in our life that, that there are some things you and I in this life, you know what? We're, we're going to mess up. We're going to mess up. But because of his grace, because of Jesus, he gives us grace. But we better be careful because he gives us so much grace, there's a, there's a point in time that we take it so much for granted, it's over. You know, if you know the story of Samson, you know, we all know if you grew up in Sunday school, you know, Samson and Delilah, and he goes in to be with Delilah, and he falls asleep on her lap, and he finally tells her everything about, you know, his real strength of all the wars he destroyed was in his hair. She cuts his hair. That's it. And, and he's in prison the rest of his life, and he finally destroys the Philistines at the end of his life. And that's it. Do you know that Samson was called a judge? The book of Judges. There's 14 judges in the book of Judges. Those judges, you say, what are they called judges? Well, it's kind of confusing. They would judge the people, but they were also protectors. They would protect Israel in that day. You know, the Bible says, many of us forget, for 20 years, Samson was the leader of all of Israel. 20 years. We think like when we hear the story of Samson and Delilah, well, here's this story, and a year goes by, and that's it, and that's it, and that's it, it's over, and you know, and this, you know, and everything happens, what you know the story. So here, let's pick up this year. For 20 years, Joseph's in prison for 13. He's following the Lord. Everything's going bad, really. Samson's doing wrong. 
And everything's great. Everything's fine. It doesn't make sense. So he tears the line apart. A few days, could have been a couple weeks goes by. He's walking through the vineyard. He's walking again in there. Then he sees the carcass of the lion. He sees the carcass, but then there's honey in the carcass. A dead animal or person do never to touch as a Nazarite. He sees the honey in there. He takes his hand in there. He takes the honey out. He says, man, this is great. Some Philistines come, up, come after him. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon him again. Wham! He tears them all apart. The Bible even says he took something else that was a carcass the, the jawbone of a donkey, and he slayed a thousand men. You'd be feeling pretty cocky after that. <laughs> right? Isn't that unbelievable? Wait a minute. Two things. He's not supposed to do that, but yet the Lord is still... What, what, is, what is that? That's God's grace. We don't understand it. We can't figure it out, but that's his grace. Maybe you were far gone for many years like I was, and the Lord was graceful to you and showed you grace and was patient. But here's the important key that we need to learn from this. He's supposed to marry within his own Israelite nation. His parents even tell him that. But he can't get away from going down. The Bible says strange women. In other words, women that worshiped idols. He would go to the Philistines, the enemy, oh, that, who for 20 years, that's who he protected Israel from, was the Philistines. He's always going down there and hanging out because he knows they can't do anything to him. Every time a fight broke out, he always won. They knew that. They were frustrated. There was so much tension that finally Israel wanted peace with the Philistines. Israel took it. 3,000 men <laughs> to go to Samson to try and overtake him. They were so afraid of him. He says, Samson, listen, we can't do this any longer. This has been going on a long time. Philistines, what they do to us when you're not around, we're always fearful. Uh, we're going to tie you up, and we're going to take you down to the Philistines. We can't handle this anymore. He says, I tell you what. I tell you what. He says, you know what? He says, uh, all right, he says, just make me a promise. You won't kill me, and I'll let you tie me up. I said, okay. So they did. They tied him up. They took him down to the Philistines. They took him down. The Philistines went to come upon him, and it says he broke the, the heavy twine that he was wrapped up in just like it was nothing and then killed more Philistines again. Again, there's so much more of the story. It's too much to get into except this. All the women he was with were the Philistines, then he ended up being with Delilah. And you know, and you've heard her name, if you knew anything about growing up in church. Now, every time he would go against the enemy, it said the Spirit of the Lord was with him. The Spirit of the Lord was with him. The Spirit of the Lord was with him. And he was doing things he shouldn't be doing. That's confusing, right? But we don't know, and here's the key for you and I today, we don't know when that stops. And that's exactly what I have to say. This is what I'm concerned about, about you are also about family members and friends or people that I grew up in church with have nothing to do with the Lord anymore. They've taken God's grace through Jesus Christ for granted. Again and again and again. There will come a point and would have come a point in time in my life, and I can remember vividly when I was as far as away as I could be from the Lord, living out in Arizona, laying on a couch on a Sunday morning when I knew I had grew up in church and was way out doing all the things I should have been doing on the weekend, and the Lord spoke to me and said, Dallas, is this what you want for the rest of your life? And that's the choice that he let me. I still... Small voice. He gave me that choice. He gives you that choice. Now, there could have come a time, and I look back on all those times and different things that I was doing, that it was so close that I could have just destroyed a lot of my future. 
but God was gracious, and that's who he is for us today. I want you to understand his grace. But there will come a point in time where there is devastation. You know what I get so frustrated about when I hear guys that I know that they're, they take <clears throat> without, you know, and they're married and they take their secretaries out to lunch. And, well, that, come on, nothing's wrong with that. I'm just taking her out to lunch. No big deal. We're going over stuff for work. And then all of a sudden, one thing leads to another. And then, uh, uh, you know, and then they're going to go out for drinks after dinner one night. And you know what? Also, all this, the whole time, the, the raises are happening. Everything's good. There's not a problem. The devil's, he's setting them up. The devil will wait, like Samson, will wait 20 years to take you out. doesn't matter. He just wants to take you out. He wants to destroy your testimony. One of the saddest verses in the Bible is this. In Genesis, or in about Samson, in Judges, chapter 16. And finally, he can't take it anymore. He's with Delilah. He's in the, around the Philistines. It, it doesn't matter that he's around them because they can't do anything to him. So he's in there. He's living under the same city with him, with Delilah. And she beats him down to the place. So finally, she says, you don't love me. You never tell me all your heart. And he finally says, hey, here's my strength in my hair if you cut my hair my strength's gone listen to verse 20 of Judges chapter 16 and finally she knew that, that Samson had told her the truth and, and, and she went out and told the Philistines and she said the Philistines are upon you Samson after she had cut his hair so he awoke from his sleep and said I will go out as before at other times, just like before, because, again, the devil will set us up by even using and tricking us with God's grace. What did the devil do with Jesus in the wilderness to tempt Jesus? Even though Jesus didn't fail, he tempted him with his own word, with God's own word. The devil even twists scripture to tempt you as long as he can take you down. Judges 16, 20, and she, and she said, the Philistines are upon you, which is true. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know. He did not know that the Lord had departed from him. You know what's confusing to me? Nazarite vow. You're not supposed to pick up a dead carcass. You're just supposed to be around one. You're not supposed to drink any type of wine or grapes. Why did it happen before? Why did it happen here? I can honestly tell you today, I've studied God's word, and you can hear many different things. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I know in your life and in my life, it is a dangerous thing to take God's grace for granted. Because then his life was destroyed. That's what concerns me about everyone that I know that I grew up with. I think, what happened to them? See, they still, they're, they're, they're still, I believe, because they're saved, they're still, but they're missing something. This is what I don't want you to miss today. Joseph if you would have said and you would have taken all the 20 years of Samson's life, many, many would take that. Still doing things in the world. Everything seems to be going okay. I, I'm still winning all these. Everything's fine. I'm still, everything's going good. And I can still mess around in the world. Or do you want to follow the Lord? And as, jo and as Joseph did in righteous living, and it said that when it was time for him to come up out of prison, that Pharaoh brought him up, put him in second hand, and commanded the land for the rest of his life. For the rest of Samson's life, his eyes were plucked out, and he was in prison. Until eventually, you no, know, he died and destroyed many Philistines at his death. But what I'm saying is today that we live in an age 
in a church age, if you will. Everything's fine. You can, you know, do whatever you want and, you know, it's all good. I, I do believe that once you accept Christ as your Savior, no one can take you out of it. But what I'm saying is today, many of us do not live victoriously because, you know what? Hey, it's, it's fine. I remember so many Christians and I'm thinking, it's fine, they're just talking to me, they're living together, no big deal. I'm not here to judge anybody, that's not, that's not my place. I'm not even here to make you feel uncomfortable today. What I'm here today to tell you is, let's not take his grace for granted. Here's why. You know why? I want you to have his favor. I don't want you, I don't want you to miss it. I, I don't want you to be like Samson because we don't know. I, you know what? Any point in time when I was where I was for those several years of my life in the late teens, early 20s, doing stuff, getting in fights and all kinds of crazy stuff, it's everything. Man, why, Lord? Why were you so good to me? I really believe that in that couch in Arizona, there was one last choice going on. It scares me when I look back at that. I don't want that for you. Because we, and I want you to know, we live in an age where the devil will set you up for 20 years and let you do whatever you want to do. And that's it. How many preacher buddies of mine are not in the ministry anymore? Because I know, and I know I got a big bullseye in the front of me, and I got a big bullseye in the back of me, and I know that. But you know what? I'm going to get really real with you today. They would get up and preach, and they were preaching for months, if not years, the whole time they were committing adultery. Now, how in the world, how in the world does that happen? That's God's grace. That's God's grace. Even through the weakest vessel, Jesus can still speak. But here's what they were doing. It's exactly what they were doing. They didn't realize anymore the spirit wasn't really moving. They were just coasting. That's exactly what was going on. And then one day, all hell broke loose, and their ministry was destroyed and overnight devastation I don't want that for you or me see we live in a world today that if we're not careful and we don't understand God's favor we can take his favor and his grace for granted but I want you to know today as we close what the Lord wants what he wants you to have he wants to bless you Again and again and again and again. You actually, if if you're here today and you know Jesus is your Savior, you are actually living in the promised land. You might feel that you're in the wilderness like Joseph did, but all the time he was prospering. In other words, let let me put it this way. As you're going through something difficult today and you don't understand it, the prosper sign is knowing that you have hope. Somehow, some way, God is going to get through this, and he's going to be glorified, and it's going to be amazing. Let's look at Romans 5, 17, as we looked at our, and we're going to close in just a minute. As we looked at one of our verses, a theme verse for our church last week about a, we are light and we are love, a city set in a hill. This is the other verse, if you're here visiting with us today, that is a theme verse for our church. Romans 5, 17, and we'll close in just a minute. For if by one man's offense death reigned through one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, you and I will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Now here's the key. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, through his grace, through the one, the only one, God's begotten son, When we accept him by his grace, he gives us a gift. You know what that gift is? The gift is that he shows us the right way to live. It's always a gift. Every day he'll show you the right way to live. He will guard you with the spirit that's within you. That's the Holy Spirit. 
Christ in you, in me, the hope of glory. He will guard you with that. And that righteous living, as you talked about the armor of light last week, that armor of light that surrounds you, it's righteous living. When you live right, there is a brightness that comes off of you, and you draw charisma. You draw people attracted to you. There is a favor on your life. You will reign in this life. Yes, you mess up. Yes, you do things you should do. And you go, oh, Lord, help me. I'm trying. And you know what? When the Lord sees that you're humble and that you're repentant, he will guide you and direct you in this life. We'll never be perfect. What I am saying, though, is don't take his favor of blessing for granted. And the way that we don't is this. We were all headed for hell. Why me? Why you? Why did you hear the gospel message or your parents taught you the way of Jesus or you heard the message on a radio or through prison or whatever it may be on YouTube? I don't know. And you prayed and asked Jesus. You will never, ever, ever be able to thank the Lord enough. And then what he does, because of his grace, he says, you know what? I'm going to bless you for accepting me into your life. All you have to do is accept the gift of right living every day and walk with me. And as the scripture tells us is this, and we'll pray. Every good and every perfect gift comes from our heavenly Father, which is above. You know what? Every good, everything that is just right for every every good thing, everything that is good, that is exactly what you need, and every perfect gift. All of us will receive blessings for the Lord. And you know what? All of us will receive the blessings that's just right for you, that is so perfect, it'll blow you out of the water when the Lord gives it to you again and again and again. That's who we are as his children. And all we have to do does not take his favor, his grace for granted. And we understand who he is in our life. As Joseph was in prison, he knew God was with him. And I want you to know today, whatever you're going through, if someone could have, it would have gone to me three and a half years ago after everything, and I don't need to go through all of it and all I'd been through for those several years and just wonder what had happened in my life. And said, Dallas, I'm going to give you a pen and paper. And the Lord says, I want you, I want you to write down where you're going to be in three and a half years. Three and a half years ago, like to right now. Hmm. I couldn't put in. I, I, you know what? I, I would have maybe gotten about <laughs> 20% of it right because I would have underestimated how good and how perfect God's gifts are to us. Amen. That's who he is. He has blown me away the last few years of my life when I'd lost everything and what he has done now. It is unbelievable. And so wherever you are today, whatever's going on, will you just hang in there like Joseph did? And it might be years. And you say, Dallas, it's been years. You know what? Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He is with you today. And to know that and to know that you will always reign in this life. You will win. You will have victory. And you will have joy. And you will have peace. If you just do this one thing today as we close. Are you willing? In all that you see right now in your life, are you willing to trust him? Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for the truths of your word and the stories that are real. Father, we grieve for brothers and sisters in Christ for some way, somehow, have gone off the path. They're not even here today. But, Lord, we pray for them, even right now. Your spirit is still with them, that you would draw them back to you. 
And Lord, we thank you today for your grace, your unmerited favor, that you saved us through your son's shed blood on a cross of Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, that favor, <laughs> Lord, we don't deserve, all of us that are here today, if we really grasp, we don't deserve what we have right now. We have hope. We have peace. We have joy. We know you're going to get us out of the situation we're in. We know you're going to prosper us. Lord, we don't deserve the future and the hope that we have in you. Lord, may we just not see our circumstances today. May we see you. You and through you, Jesus, we will reign in this life. Not through anything we do, but through you. Your shed blood, your life that you've given us to live by and the word that you've given us to walk in through that gift of righteousness. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, if there's someone here today that doesn't know you as their Savior, they've never understood your grace, they've never really realized that they can accept you just the way they are. Lord, if they're watching on YouTube, Lord, if they're here right now, may they be willing to say, Lord, forgive me a sinner. Jesus, I believe that you are God's only son and you shed your perfect blood cross for me and I ask you to come into my heart to forgive me for all my sins. Father, let them know, Jesus, that's all they have to do. If there's someone here today who's been leads us in this invitation, may they accept you this day, this resurrection day that we worship you every week and we'll give you all praise in Jesus' name.